Greetings friends and enemies, welcome back to Art by Flan. Uh, today we're doing art, um, if, obviously, <laughs> welcome to Art by Flan, today we're baking a cake. No, uh, if you've seen my sketchbook tours, you've probably seen me draw uh, a Minecraft character based around the um, Thumbcraft mod, which is probably one of my favorite mods ever now that I've actually figured out how to play it. Um, so I'm drawing my character uh, f from that. Like, I just sort of ended up basing her on the mod, and she's not my Minecraft skin currently yet. She might become that in the future. Um, but I did want to draw her. If you watch my sketchbook tours, you've probably seen uh, a bunch of sketches I've done of her and her look. So that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> I feel really really dumb having a quote-unquote Minecraft character, but the design is so fun and the mod is just so well done and kind of immersive that it's really easy to just sort of make a character that fits into that and I like to make characters so that's that's uh what I did. Um but I said I don't really have much to say about this particular piece. It's not overly complicated or anything. Um there was something that I, I noticed on Twitter the other day that I thought would make a really interesting conversation topic, and that is the difference between speed paints and time lapses and the misuse of the word speed paints. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have been using speed paint for mine uh, for a long time, but I remembered that there are there is such a thing as actually speed painting where you just paint really quickly. What I do is technically time lapsing. So if you ever come to my channel and think, man, she draws really, really fast, that's that's not the case at all. I, I draw relatively slow and I just speed up the clips to make a time lapse. So technically what I do is not speed painting, even though that's what I call it. And there was some debate um, in the Twitter thread that I saw. I don't even remember who posted it or liked it or whatever to make it show up on my feed, but I thought it was an interesting concept. So what do you guys call it? I call it speed painting, but I may change it up to time lapses just because I feel like it's more representative of what I do. I don't speed paint, I do time lapses. I show you my work process, my workflow from pretty much beginning to end. Sometimes I leave out the, most of the time I leave out the sketching because when I do sketches that end up on YouTube videos, I rarely um, um, record it just because I'm piddling around and sketching takes me forever and ever and it would just add so much onto these videos that I don't usually include it unless there's just not a lot of meat um, to the video. But uh, that's sort of off topic. So what I technically do is time lapsing and when you guys see the word speed paint, do you automatically think time lapse or do you automatically think, man, this person does art really, really fast? Because nowadays, originally, like, in the beginning stages of the YouTube art community, or posting on YouTube, um, speed paints were just painting fast. Like, somewhere along the line, speed paints and time lapses became, the word speed paint became synonymous with the word time lapse, and we've just sort of merged the two together. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, it's what happens with language um, all the time. Like the word literally, it used to mean something literally and now it's sort of a uh, an exaggeration word and that's just that's just like and so many people throw a fit about stuff like that but it's just how language evolves um and it evolves even faster now in the world of the internet uh, but i just think it's interesting the the divergence between speed paint and um time lapse and how they become synonymous. If you notice, there's a tinier version of the picture without lines in the bottom. That's my color key. I wasn't really sure on her colors when I started. Like, I know I wanted to use a lot of purples because purple's a big theme throughout Filmcraft, um, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to set it up because if you've seen a colored picture in my sketchbook, it's, her design's a bit different. I changed it up, um, and so I wanted to redo her colors correctly. Um, so I ended up just doing all the colors on one layer and just using it as a color key and recording myself going in and actually doing the individual coloring since I know a lot of people have asked that I include at least that. I know a lot of people want me to include my sketching portion, but like I said, it's it's really fidgety. <laughs> like, I feel a lot of, I still feel a lot of pressure. I've been doing YouTube for two years in February, I think, which I have a special video coming up for that, so don't worry. Um, but I still feel like really pressured when I have to sketch and record, um, if it's not something, if I'm not in my comfort zone. So you'll notice some of the sketches I have done have been stuff that's really in my comfort zone and I don't need to pull up 18,000 references or tweak things 800 times when I sketch it, which I just feel like would get 
really, really time consuming and make the video much, much longer than it has to be. So I'm, I'm just working on the shading and I think I fully um, converted myself over to Clip Studio Paint now. I use that and Photoshop for final details. It used to be Paint Tool Sci and uh, Photoshop for final details, but I really, really love Clip Studio Paint and everything it has to offer in terms of an art program. Um, Paint Tool Sci, I guess, feels lighter. Like, <laughs> that may be wrong. I'm sure Paint Tool Sci can do a lot of things. I just never learned how to do them. But I feel like um, Clip Studio Paint is a bit bulkier, not in terms of running it. It's not like opening Photoshop. Um, but it, it just feels like it's got a lot more to offer. I like a lot more of what it has and how I'm able to use that. So I've definitely transitioned completely over to Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop. Maybe one day I'll get rid of Photoshop, but not anytime soon because I like Photoshop. I use it for a lot more than just doing art. Um, I use it to edit photos or make dumb memes or something like that. So Photoshop is definitely a lifelong skill for me, so I don't think it will be going anywhere. Um, as much as I feel like I could transfer over to Clip Studio Paint completely, I don't think I will just as a choice. Um, because I like, I like, I like Photoshop, guys. I really like Photoshop. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good program, guys. It's, it's good. It's good. You just, it's really intimidating. <laughs> Like, if you don't know, like, I remember first learning Photoshop when it was just Photoshop 7. Like, before it became CC and all that jazz. Like, Photoshop 7, I think, was the first Photoshop I had, and it was so intimidating. <laughs> like, there's so much to learn, and I did so much wrong for such a long time until I figured out, maybe I should Google some tutorials, and I did, and I, I, I learned. By the time I actually took a class in Photoshop, I had already learned so much about it, just from my own research. So I I passed that class with flying colors. I learned a few tips or tricks, but most of it was just reiterating what I already knew. So I was really proud of myself for that. I remember um, when <laughs> I got the book for my Photoshop class and it I was supposed to have like a disc in the back because I took online college courses for a bit and it was supposed to have a disc in the back um, that had all like the, um, the, the teaching materials, the images you could edit and use, things like that. And mine was literally cracked in half. <laughs> like, I don't know what it went through in shipping, because it was shipped with a bunch of other books, and it seemed pretty safe inside the book, because the Photoshop book was between some other books, and it seemed pretty safe, except for when I got it and it was cracked in half. And luckily the teacher had an online source for those, but I was so devastated. I was like, really? I'm gonna fail this freaking class because somebody snapped my, because the shipping company snapped my disc in half on the way here? That was, this is so off topic to what I had originally planned for this video, which was talking about the difference between um, time-lapsing and speed paints and how those, those became synonymous with one another. What do you guys call them? I know a lot of the artists I follow call them speed paints. Um, Rarely have I seen the term time lapse, or if I have, I haven't really, um, it hasn't really registered with me because, like I said, in our modern, in our fancy modern words, <laughs> which I don't have a very good grasp of, um, it's become synonymous. It means the same thing essentially, but I feel like somehow it kind of discredits actual speed paint artists who just can do real art real fast. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm I'm just rambling at this point, talking about any old thing. Listen, I mean, mortal words of Primus, they can't all be zingers, okay? Not every video is going to be a deep, meaningful video with, you know, deep, meaningful art and, and really great commentary that's just on the point all the time. Not going to happen. I am scatterbrained. I have days where I just want to ramble. That's why are you at my channel if you don't want to hear me ramble. That's not... This is not the place for you. Thanks for stopping by though. I really appreciate it. But we should be shifting into the final piece here. If you like what you see, don't forget to click that like button, leave a comment. Um, if you want to subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And a special thank you to my patrons, um, Adri Scribbles and Parza Vale. Thank you for your continued support and thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye